Hi guys. Um, this one's a little bit more of a technical um, video today. So um, I know some of my students are just starting a new project and what I want to do is to give some um, guidance, some guidelines for how I would tackle a new art project. Um, so anyone who might be given a new title, um, how you would work with that or what I think is best practice. Um, there are four key elements really between most of the exam boards in terms of the criteria that they're looking for. So having taught for this is my 22nd year of teaching art, well, I know what they're really looking for is good, strong observations. Um, so sometimes that ex explicitly says it does need to be drawings as well, um, but not always. So it's worth looking into exactly what the exam board require because you can do observations in lots of ways. So observations in terms of your own photographs, videos and so on is another way of recording from observation. Um, you do need to do research, so you need to think about the artists that interest you um, in relation to the theme and it's a good idea to have a few artists so that you can really explore how they work, exactly what it is that they're trying to achieve, what it is they're doing uh, and you can really analyse your work as it develops alongside your knowledge of the artist's work. So this is really important that it shouldn't be a case of that you're looking at an artist's work in order to copy their work, but you're looking for ideas and inspiration and you're cross-referencing. So perhaps when you create something, you're then looking at the artist and thinking, look at the artist that you were originally um, reflecting on and thinking how does my work sit in this conversation is there a connection with this artist's work ideally there should be um, but you you can really get into the analysis you know of what you think the artist was trying to achieve and then perhaps what you were trying to achieve are there some similar results um, is the work itself about the technique that you were learning the technique from the artist so that research is really really important um, experimenting with different materials processes and techniques is the third category so it's really important that you are not just kind of sticking to one area and refusing to listen to your art teacher who's saying you really need to expand this you really need to explore so really experimenting getting out of your comfort zone because obviously we learn more about ourselves when we are um, given an opportunity to experiment explore try and develop um, new skills um, always as well with my students I will often say don't expect perfection straight away I mean what is perfection anyway you know some of the most beautiful drawings that I've seen have been drawings that the person who created them thought was the student who created them thought was just a, a kind of a, a mess or a load of mistakes and so on and I'm like this is beautiful this is really really stunning so once you um, take out some of that um, self-criticism and really start to enjoy the process um, and enjoy exploring and experimenting you'll find that category a lot more interesting and it will have a lot more value to you and then finally we're talking about making an outcome so really that that whole journey um, depending on which exam board depending on what level etc whether it's um, a GCSE level a level um, international baccalaureate whether you talk about moving on into your degrees and so on they're really Really exploring those kind of categories so are you making good analysis with your work against other artists are you referencing other artists thoughtfully and so on so when you start um, really you shouldn't start with an end product in in mind you shouldn't hear the title um, assuming you've been given a title and then think excellent this is what I'm going to go and make because really that first stage should be about exploring and should be about looking for other artists that perhaps you might find relevant to your work so um, we're going to assume um, for the sake of this video that our title is simplicity and complexity now I sat downstairs and I've got a lot of books um, art books I'm not showing off sorry but I've got quite a lot of art books you know you build them up over the years um, and so I decided that I would um, just write down some ideas to do with the the theme of simplicity and complexity this is not how I would present it this is my rough notes so if we're going into then how would I present something how would I present 
present, not preempt, a page of ideas, you know, I'd be looking at doing something which is really visually exciting, something which has notes, has artists, has um, what some people might refer to as doodles or free drawing and so on. You might have things that expand and so on. I mean, it should be really legible. It, it's not about being messy. Um, but, you know, here I've listed artists down the side and kind of given them a punch uh, of white behind them so they stand out against all of the, the stuff that's going on in the, the back of the page. But it's about how you... Um, present it so that it's going to be visually exciting for the examiner. Um, so this would just be my rough notes page where I've put the title down and then I start to expand from that and start to think about, um, okay, what are the things that I think are going to be most relevant to this? I've then highlighted artists and highlighted styles. So it may be that I start with one particular style um, or type of material. Um, so it may be that I'm looking at animation and I can look at William Kentridge taking a line for a walk. Um, great bit of film, uh, really simple, um, but it really starts to develop the idea of connecting that kind of performance art and animation together. It might be that I want to look at um, mark making and there I've listed Paul Clay um, that's spelt K-L-E-E, -E, um, who was quoted as saying, a line is a dot that went for a walk. So again, when I was talking in one of the previous videos about taking a line for a walk, um, you know, really kind of honing in on how can I start with something simple, then it becomes more complicated. Um, up here we've got sculpture. Um, sculpture is one of my favourite areas, but we've got, got something like the um, sort of hyper real sculpture of Ron Muick, um, or the kind of giant objects of Klaus Oldenburg, where it's really about trying to keep things as real as possible. But then you might look at someone like Henry Moore, where it's semi abstract, and we're trying to kind of explore something that's part human. Um, but also has a sort of soft, gentle feel to it that is quite organic. We've got Joseph Cornell listed for people who like doing assemblage or collage. Um, and he would put lots of pieces in boxes, um, almost like miniature installations inside a box. Um, and they could become really complex. Um, but again, they, they could be very simple, very straightforward um, pieces. Um, but, you know, you can kind of, get, we've got lino reduction over here in the corner. Um, people who enjoy printmaking or have access to a press, um, it's that idea of doing things in stages. So you could have the simplicity of a design, but the complexity of a multi-layered design. Um, so again, I've got artists such as Anita Klein for portraits or Angie Lewin for nature. Um, and those kind of artists would be really useful. For collage, here we've got um, Hannah Hock, Brock, Stezeka. Um, we've got land art. So I was talking about land art yesterday. Richard Long, Andy Goldsworthy. So being able to go outside and use the materials that you're presented with. So again, that whole thing of um, using nature, some people might find that that in terms of the simplicity could be really beautiful. And in terms of the complexity, it's about how you use it, how you develop the idea. And, and you'd really need to look at how the artist did. Their work is extremely complicated, um, time consuming, etc. And so you may need to think about right, what's actually achievable. How do I simplify their idea? Idea, um, and also make it my own how am I going to use the suggestion of what they've been doing um, or the ideas around what they've been doing or even the physical materials that they were using but actually make it my own idea Photography, you've got someone like Cindy Sherman, Scott Hazard. So photographers who are using processes or performing in a way in front of the camera that could be really interesting and that tie into, particularly with Cindy Sherman, real like social issues. Um, again, that could be in relation to simplicity and complexity. Essentially, any title you really can work in whichever direction you want to. So don't get too absorbed with right simplicity and complexity. Down at the bottom, I was talking about doing a series. So you're either going from something that's very complicated and working towards something that's very simple. Um, so you might take an object which is a, a very 
um, detailed um, piece and then try to reduce that. So it may be through um, computer aided design, it may be that you work it through layers, it may be that you just simplify it in terms of photographing it and then looking at just um, using uh, again photoshop or equivalent so that you can reduce the information so you can go for something very simple it might be that you're zooming in on on the object so it's much more complicated from a distance and then becomes much simpler but it might be the opposite particularly if you were using something like a microscope so you might do um, have access to perhaps a science department that has access to a microscope camera where you can really zoom in on an object and explore it in much greater detail um, but that, that kind of investigation could prove really exciting, really fruitful. Um, so making a series that becomes increasingly complex, um, photorealism to the abstract. So again, that would be, you know, exploring something so that you either zoom in, um, perhaps so it, you extrapolate the information. So you might take an object and then think of it as a line drawing and then see what you can do with the line drawing and so on. Basically, you want to start with a series of different ideas, artists, craftspeople, um, thoughts, write as much as you want on that because it really should be um, just thoughts initially. And then I would say go from that stage to um, taking, this is how I would suggest that my students work is to prepare a background. This is probably a little bit too busy because it wasn't a background I prepared for a sketchbook page. It was just a page from my sketchbook that I have yet to paint on. So prepare a page and then I would um, think about where your title is going to be and how you then um, write down basically all of the things that you think are relevant or important and make them stand out and make sure that they look really, really powerful, really strong. Your examiner really doesn't want to be sort of searching for the words or struggling to read what you've written. So just make it really, really clear. And then you will probably, from your, essentially your mind map, you will probably find that there's a specific area that you want to investigate. That's ideal. So you want to start, you want a starting point, particularly if you're working quite independently and particularly at the moment where you may have less access to art materials, your art department, schools, your art teacher, um, though, most of us are here waiting for your emails, I'm sure, um, then, you know, there's a real independence to that, but it comes with that responsibility to think, right, what have I actually got that I can do? What's around me that I can use easily? Um, and how can I develop that? So just a few ideas to get started with. I've got Lucian Freud, if you really like portraits, then have a look at some of Lucian Freud's etchings. Um, they're really, really stunning in their um, raw kind of, um, the fact that they've been produced in a way that is so unflattering to the sitter. You know, it's really like, whew, that's real. Um, there's something quite powerful about that um, they definitely haven't been drawn they haven't been etched or drawn in any way to be flattering um, but if you've got people around I'm not saying you know draw them so that they want to go and cry in a corner um, but you know think about how they're sitting so rather than having a model so that they're kind of looking straight at you and so on it might be that you're quite happy for them to be resting it might be you're quite happy for them to be carrying on with their work and they're looking down and you're going to have to draw them at that angle and then you know have a look at someone like Lucian Freud to see if you can get some good ideas from that so you know even the front cover of the book is like wow I don't know that I'd have been happy to um oh no Mm, oh, I don't know, it's tough, isn't it? I don't know. To have been drawn by Lucian Freud, probably quite cool. But I'm not sure I want that. Anyway, that's just vanity, isn't it? So ignore me. Um, someone like Andy Goldsworthy. Now, you're not going to be able to go out and throw dirt in the air. But the concept is so simple. The actual workings of it are much more complex, the recording of it and the fact that you can't currently do this, or you can't currently go out in a group and perform this, but you could plan to because there will be a time when you could do this or something similar. You know, how exciting is that? So we're looking at um, Andy Goldsworthy's beautiful book called Wood, um, but there are lots of others. We've got Tides and so on. You know, it's all just this beautiful natural sculpture. 
if you're really keen on working with natural materials, then Richard Long and um, Andy Goldsworthy, just absolutely beautiful. This is just another one. This might suggest that Andy Goldsworthy just loves to throw things in the air. But look up his work. It's absolutely stunning. Um, this one I thought I'd show you because the painter, Peter Doig, you can go from things that are really apparently simple, like this painting, to ones that are immensely complex, like this one. So it might be that someone like Peter Doig, if you're a painter and you want to find a uh, some examples of paintings where you look at some that are just really subtle um, and then some that are just so busy there's just so much going on in them then doig i would strongly recommend um and then we've got other artists here so i've got this beautiful book of prints by the artist elizabeth frink and um It's just so simple. So, you know, with something like that, sorry, I'll hold the title up as well so that you can see Elizabeth Frink. Um, but with something like that, the reason that might work really well is you could do some research on Elizabeth Frink's animal prints, for example, and then it might be that you do a series of drawings of your own dog, take some photographs, uh, maybe you've got another pet, um, and you just do these really, really simple line drawings um, that later you could turn into prints, or they might just stay as line drawings, uh, almost to the point where you are concentrating on how can I draw the animal with as few marks as possible or can I draw the animal without taking my pencil off the page um, can I draw this animal um, maybe it's always bouncing around the place and so you take a photograph and you work from a photograph uh, but can I draw it so I really get a sense of depth can I use good strong tone so particularly with observation drawings the key is making sure that um, you record light and dark if you get light and dark right, then you create the illusion of depth. So you create the illusion of three dimensionality. So just always look for the shadows. Don't worry so much about the outlines. Look for shadows. Um, get some good pencils if you can. So if you don't have any, but someone could perhaps send you some or you can get some from Amazon. I know that's taking a little longer than usual at the moment, understandably so. And I also mentioned Richard Long. Um, so... Again, that idea of what could I take from one place? I'm going to have to look underneath. What could I take from one place and move it to another? This book is huge, okay? It's huge. It's a beautiful book. But it's got so many ideas in it. Um, he just takes pieces from nature, brings them into gallery settings. These are not simple pieces. These are complex pieces. But they also start with things that we might do. So that idea of making a stone circle or a stone stack. I mean, who doesn't? Well, OK, maybe this is admitting too much. But when you're at the beach, who doesn't stack the pebbles, starting with the biggest and trying to get to the smallest and so on? I mean, I don't know anyone who doesn't do it. And I do know people who don't do it. But I cannot go to the beach without making stone stacks. So be thinking about what you might be able to do. Perhaps you've got a garden. Perhaps you're lucky enough to be able to go out in the garden, have a look at what materials are around that you might be able to use, that you could um, use, even if it's just to do little tester pieces and photograph those, they could go in your sketchbook. The idea is that you start with your title, you explore some basic ideas as part of a mind map, and from that, you then think about artists that would be useful to you and you get some research done. So you really start to know and understand what those artists were doing, uh, when they were working, perhaps what their influences were or who, which other artists were influencing them. So who are their contemporaries? Um, and then you really get into the kind of nitty gritty of what is it I want to do? So you might be limited to what your art department can allow you to do um, and, and what materials they'll be able to give you um, and what you have at home. So we need to take all of those things into consideration and, um, and make it work for you. So do the absolute best you can with what you've got. Your art teacher should support you um, and 
try and develop some really good thoughts, um, really strong ideas that you can then discuss with your art teacher about this is what I'd really like to make. And they should then be able to scaffold you and say, well, let's help support you in doing that. Or how could you possibly change that idea? So it is uh, more ambitious or um, perhaps less cliched. Quite often I'm trying to just try to tweak people's ideas. So it's going to be something that's really quite fresh. Don't get obsessed with, but the other person, another person has had the same idea. Yeah, like, look it up on the internet loads of people have probably had the same idea so don't try to be like the only person in the world that's ever thought of drawing a shoe but it's like well they're drawing a shoe as well that's fine let them draw their shoe you draw your shoe the drawings will be different so try not to be competitive about it enjoy um best of luck i look forward to seeing some exciting results fairly soon take care guys bye